Top Tip Tuesday time. It's Bob here from Insidium. Hello. And today we're looking at particles. So this is going to be relevant for Nexus simulations on the GPU, but also just regular X particles sims as well. We're looking at particle display modes, how they appear in your viewport, and the kind of quirks of some of the display modes, how we can look at things like rotation, how we can look at particle size. And then we're going to look at how we can generate geometry or splines from the particle display so we can render them. So let's get that clock started and we'll jump into Cinema 4D. Here we have an X particles emitter with a Nexus Turbulence modifier, but this works the same if you're just using the regular X particles turbulence with the emitter in the CPU mode. So we're in the display tab of our emitter, and by default, the editor display, the particles are set to display as these tiny squares. Now these squares, by the default, and if we have a look at the choices, also the dots, ticks, and axes, all of these modes do not show the particle size. So if we go to our emitter, emission tab, you can see that these particles all have a radius of five centimeters. Let's put a bit of variation in that. We'll put four centimeters variation. And now this is saying that any one particle will have a radius of anywhere between five minus four and five plus four. So anywhere between one and nine. But if we hit play, we're not having that size difference represented in our display type. Let's go back to our display tab. And that's because the squares doesn't reflect that. Now we can increase the size of these squares in our display by going to our display size factor. Let's bump this up to say 500%. And those squares are kind of scaled up and they become what look like these filled circles. But look, they're not showing the difference in size that these particles have. Let's put that back down to 100 and we'll change this to a display type that does show the particle size so anything from box down will do that let's pick box filled hit play and now we're seeing we've got the variation in particle size because the box type does show the particle size and there's all these different types of displays let's uh, pick arrow that's a good one so there we've got our arrows of different size being shown in our display. Now, let's have a look at the color. By default, the color mode is set to single, so all of the particles just get this same blue color, but we can change that to one of the others. Let's pick gradient random. So what this is going to do is it gives each particle a random color from somewhere on this gradient. By default, it's blue to white, and there we can see that happening. We can go to load preset. Let's load this full colors one. And now we're getting those colored particles. Now, this, uh, these arrows look good. This arrow display mode looks good when we're using tangential rotation. So the particles rotate in the direction of travel. So let's go to our emitter, extended data tab. And in the general data, we can check uh, use rotation and the rotation type we want tangential so pointing in the direction of travel let's hit play and now we're getting this nice animation of our arrows so that's looking good but this is just a display mode for the viewport these arrows can't be rendered if we go and try and render these particles let's go to the material manager and we'll create a new x particles material so go to create extensions x particles material we'll leave it in the default put it on the emitter and let's render this frame just with the standard renderer control r and there look we're rendering particles as these circles and if you try and render any uh, particles in x particles they will always render only as circles but we are able to generate an object that we can render from this display mode to do that go to insidium x particles generators and we want to use this xp display render let's bring that in it's set to generate the particle display but it needs to know which emitter you want to generate it from so let's drag in our emitter into this link field and we'll go forward a frame to somewhere like here hit render and we're still just going to have those circles and that's because we need to move our material from the emitter to the display render object that's generating the object. And now if we hit render, 
there we have got our arrows and if we go to the emitter display type we can change that from arrow let's put it on pyramids hit play and now we've got these pyramid display types and if we hit render now we're able to render those in the viewport